of how I take the olives from the tree, uh, where I take them to to get them uh, pressed to produce the olive oil so you can get a, a really behind the scenes of something that means something very special to me and of course I'll take you from the point that we harvest the olives off through to olive oil on a personal journey from my olive trees to olive oil. Now the first thing in the process of uh, harvesting the olives is making sure that we can collect them when they fall onto the ground and just here we have netted all the way around the outside of the, uh, the olive tree just behind me. Quite far as well, almost up to some of my hedging here, up to other trees in the olive grove around the outside because as we start to pluck or harvest the olives they go straight down onto the net which means it's protected from the ground above and it's a lot easier for us to collect up afterwards and the reason why it's spread so far around the outside of the tree well they've got some bounce on them <laughs> olives uh, and, and when they come down from the tree they'll bounce onto that and we want to keep all of the olives within the footprint of the net so stage one net underneath the tree in readiness for harvesting so what i've got here is uh, an electric rake, so to speak. Uh, they're plastic uh, tines at the end of an extendable uh, rake. Uh, and just over here, there's a little button that... As you can see, oscillates the rake itself. So as I start to engage the rake with the olive branches, it doesn't damage the branch of the olive trees because they're, they're really quite flexible and durable. But what it does do is the vibration will rake out the olives and collect them onto the net underneath. And as you can see here, where the rake's gone through the branches themselves, it's taken every olive off there and the branches and the foliage are still intact. It's a really easy process. As I say in the olden days, it was a wooden ladder and just raking out, but you had strong upper body strength. Um, but it's just like combing your hair and combing the knots out of it as well. And on the ground, all the olives fall down onto the net, which makes it really easy for us to collect them up. And another good tip from an old olive grove pruner once told me that the secret to success, whether you've pruned an olive in Italy right, is whether a swift can fly through the branches without touching a single one. Now these have obviously grown in a little bit now, but it's at that point of pruning where it's so clear and the framework is there that a swift can fly through. That's the secret of success. We next try to group the net together, collecting all the olives in one location. Uh, this is why the net is so big, because as you can see, some of the olives are right to the side, but we group them together so it's easier to collect up and put into the containers. So there we are, look at the olives here. Aren't they marvellous? A combination of colours. Some that have already turned black, some of them are green. And we take them all and put them in to these plastic containers. All the olives, as many as we can fit in. And then when this is full, we move on to the next container. But of course, there's plenty more to rake out first. Now, some farmers actually have a device that shakes the whole tree and it's followed by tractors collecting up the olives. But on a, a small uh, estate like this one here, doing tree by tree is enough. Now, I've got about 100 trees around here in the olive grove. It sounds a lot, but in main production terms, it's quite small, but certainly enough to produce the oil that I need. Right. <laughs>
Now, the one thing to, uh, to be quite reassured about at this stage is I don't actually have to go through and pick out every small leaf because as part of the process uh, the small leaves are actually cleaned as the olives go through so there's a mixture in here of a few leaves and branches and other bits and pieces so I don't need to worry about that at this stage all I need to do is to fill up these crates and get them over to the processing area where this bit of cleaning takes place onto the next tree um, and uh, there's quite a few of them to do of course extracting olive oil from the olives is big business as there's so many olive trees in Italy and just down the road here is one of these massive processors that takes not only local olives but also olives from all over Italy but because mine are grown in my own olive grove I want to take them to a local processor that doesn't use so much of the advanced machinery as here but still uses some of the old ways of pressing. So I'm going to take my olives not here but to a local place to make the flavour so much better. Now here is one of the many trays of olives that I've got to be turned into oil and I'm here at Frantelli Genoboli which is a marvellous family that uh, presses the olives here. and They produce so much olive oil from their presses at the back, but they also infuse them with different flavours as well. So I brought my olives here so they can go into the pressing process to turn them into olive oil. The first thing to do is to transfer all the smaller crates into one large crate so it's easier to handle and feed into the machinery. Once loaded into the large boxes, a forklift takes it and puts it onto the weighing scales. The weighing scales then record the amount of olives so that the farmer can be charged by weight for the process of pressing. First thing to do is to tip it into the hopper. This collects everything, leaves and olives, all into one location. It is then fed through to the escalator which takes the olives up to the top in sizeable quantities. So as part of the separation process of taking away leaves and branches. It goes up the escalator and then is deposited into the top of the container. Now this container is very clever because it starts to separate the branches that are mixed in with the olives and this is taken away. All the olives then that are cleaned are deposited. An additional suction takes place here that sucks up any small branches or insects that may be mixed up with the olives. Then out the other end are cleaned olives ready for processing. A little drill separator then draws the olives and takes them along a conveyor and deposits them in where they're to be crushed. Now right behind me here are the two giant granite wheels of stone that's crushing the olives to make a paste effectively. That paste gets sent down here and is applied onto the surface of those mats. Those mats then are taken over there and pressed until all of the juice comes out and that's when it gets interesting. These giant heavy granite stone wheels continue to rotate while the sweeping bar pulls the olives back in. So everything is crushed down to make a very fine paste. Around and around they go, olives being scooped and crushed. Now this paste is perfect, it contains everything from the olive, the skin, the stone and of course the flesh at the same time. It looks a little bit like mud but it smells fantastic. Then all the paste is applied onto these mats creating almost like a matte sandwich. 
As the guy lifts the last one, it is in fact tipping off the dryness from the paste that was extracted previously. So the mats are used again and again. The machine then takes the mats and stacks them on top of each other, like loads of polo mints stacked up. It then gets taken over to the hydraulic presses, which gradually force the mats closer and closer together, squeezing and squeezing, so all the goodness and the juice comes out. As you can see here behind me, these presses are squashing the mats, and in between is the paste of the olives. The pressure pushes the mat to the maximum, and slowly all the juices from the olives seep out right to the bottom and all of the oil that's in the olives then gets spread through all the pipes then in the top you've got a mixture of oil and water what happens is it goes into this drum just here which uses centrifugal force and separates water from oil. To help the central fugal force separate the oil from the water, more water is added, boiling water, and that effectively dilutes down the paste. And that is where the art of central fugal force spinning the oil and the water that's mixed together. The oil is heavier and therefore gets separated from the water, and all you're left with is beautiful gold goodness. Right at the end of the process, of course, there are the dry husks of the olives. Now all the oil has been taken from it, but they are recycled too. It gets dispensed out here into massive stocks, and then it is used to create fertilizer. Nothing gets wasted. Now, here I am back in my own olive grove, and uh, I've got my own freshly pressed olive oil from these very trees. And it is very different from the type of olive oil that you would buy in a supermarket. Three main things stand out and they're all to do with the senses. First of all, sight. That's traditional olive oil that you buy from uh, supermarkets. Slightly uh, oily in the, uh, in the viscosity, whereas the olive oil here glugs a little bit more, so it's a little thicker. And of course it's much more rich in colour, it looks more like honey than oil itself. The second sensory experience that's different from the stuff you buy in the shops is, oh, that heavenly scent. It smells, it smells of Italy and very rustic. And the third experience that you have with your senses is the flavor. Mm. So very velvety, really full of flavor and it, and it bites the back of the throat as well. Just think of it, it's so good for you as well. It doesn't contain any cholesterol, sodium or carbohydrates. And also it's very rich in vitamins too, things like vitamin A, E, K and B. And it's also full of antioxidants as well. So olive oil doesn't only look better, it doesn't only smell better or taste better. It's incredibly good for you too. Thanks trees. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and share. And for more great videos like this, please subscribe. And for more great information, visit my website, daviddominey.com.